All right, so welcome to another Camaro restoration episode. And in this episode, this is kind of part two, I guess, of the rear differential rebuild. And part one was just the uh, new parts that I got for the rear, rear end. And part two, which is the part we're doing now, is going to be uh, quickly cleaning it. I'm not going to film a lot of the cleaning of it. Um, again, I use the same process that I used for my subframe uh, with the oven cleaner, uh, the, you know, the, the wire wheeling, the, the pour 15 metal prep and then the spray paint. So I'm going to kind of go through that same process. I'll film a little bit of it, but I don't want to, uh, I want the main content of this video to be the uh, disassembly of the rear axle. So that's the goal for this video is to completely disassemble this rear axle and that includes pretty much everything but the, uh, the drum brakes. I'm not going to take those apart yet. I do have uh, new brakes to put on, but I'm going to leave those assembled, at least leave one assembled. Uh, so I have a, a reference point to put those things back together because I don't know about you guys, but I always kind of get turned around when I'm doing drum brakes as far as all the springs and how it all goes back together. So uh, axle shafts, uh, carrier, ring and pinion, uh, all the bearings, all the races, completely disassembled, and that's the goal for this video. So as I said in a previous video, uh, this is uh, new territory for me. I have never torn down a rear differential to this extent before, and I'm pretty excited about it. So uh, let's get into it and let's go have some fun. All right, so I'm about to do something that's, uh, you know, not very fun, and I'm not looking forward to it. And once I turn the camera around, you'll agree with me. All right, so that's all you need to see there is a pressure washer and 10 bolt. Got a 10 bolt hanging out in my backyard. Got it sprayed down with oven cleaner. It's doing its job, and I'm going to give it about 20, 30 minutes. And then I'm going to fire up that pressure washer and uh, see if I can get this thing cleaned up. All right, so here's what she looks like uh, now that she's been pressure washed and cleaned up. Um, I've also done a little bit of wire wheeling on this so far, uh, but it was a lot because it was a lot more uh, rusty than what you see here. But uh, man, what a difference! Looks so much better cleaned up, and uh, really looks good. All right, so I'm going to finish wire wheel on this, and then I'm going to at least get it in primer uh, to stop the rust from coming back. And I'm probably not going to actually paint it black until we're finished with the uh, disassembly and reassembly. And I'm doing that because I um, just don't want to mess up the, the paint job. Um, and we probably will, given all that we're going to do to this uh, rear axle. So, All right, so here's the rear axle after primer. And this is just Rust-Oleum rattle can primer, pressure washing, wire wheeling, pour 15 metal prep. And uh, like I said, rattle can Rust-Oleum primer. And what a difference. Really looks good. Really happy with the way it turned out. All right, so what I'm really tempted to do uh, while I'm thinking about painting this thing is uh, knocking that cover off. And obviously I didn't do anything to the cover because I'm replacing it, but uh, take that cover off, let the oil drain out, and kind of see what the, what the gear ratio is and then what kind of condition the gears are in after uh, 43 years of service. Well, that is some pretty black oil. Um, so I'm guessing this hadn't been changed for a while. Um, don't see any chunks, anything like that. Oh yeah, there's some, there's some grit down there. You can't, I can feel it, but that's not too bad. Just really dark, hadn't been changed in a while and uh, probably well overdue. But it doesn't look too bad. I honestly didn't expect the cover to just fall off like that. I've actually never had one do that. I've always had to pry it off. And on the the bottom lip of this thing was too close to the. I couldn't get a couldn't get a socket on that one, so I had to knock that lip down because somebody's obviously in the past tried to pry it up. As you can see, it's all and it's kind of deformed right there. So before I go and kind of tear this thing apart. I just uh <laughs> I just think that's the coolest thing. All these gears and how it all works. Look at that. All those spider gears in there. So I don't see any wear on these uh teeth right here at all. It's got all its teeth. Um I'm still looking for the gear ratio. I haven't found that yet, but I will. I'm just letting it drain out and then I'll uh dig into it a little bit deeper. All right, so it's time to start uh disassembling this and 
The first thing I want to do is remove that little 5 16 screw. And when you do, this shaft right here is supposed to just slide out. And you're getting that out of the way so you can then push your axle shafts in a little bit, remove the C-clips, which actually should just fall off, and then you can pull your axle shafts out. Now, if you just put a socket on this and start turning it, uh, the whole thing's just going to spin. So what I did is I got a rag and kind of jammed it in there and had to kind of play with that a couple times till it got stuck to where this screw is facing out towards me. 5 sixteenths. And I didn't think it would come off easy, but I got it. Boy, I sure hope that didn't break off because that looks really short. And, uh, hmm. I don't think that's it. Well, that's a problem. Uh, because I believe that that thing broke off. Um, that's not good. And I've heard that that's a common problem and a real pain to deal with. And uh, I'm not really sure how to deal with it. Now, we're not going to reuse that shaft or anything, so I don't really care if I break it. All right, well, I'm trying to figure that out. At least I can try to get the uh, pinion nut off. So uh, make sure you stuff your rag in there again, and let's see how this works. That worked pretty easy and you just turn it the other way and the rag falls right out all right so here's where I'm at with my uh, rear axle and like I said I've got the cover off I've been letting it drain out and then this is the 5 16 bolt and it goes right in there and you can see the shaft there so you can get an idea how much is left in there there it is Hopefully you can see that, but it looks to be about a half of an inch until you get to the shaft and then it should go through the shaft, uh, this shaft right here to hold that in. So that's where I broke off. Honestly, I don't think there's very many threads left in there and I'm really hoping this extractor kit works. All right, so here's the kit. It comes in a little tube like this and it's a uh, Skyway Tools. Once again, a deluxe differential pinion shaft lock bolt extraction kit. Uh, comes with a, it's a 5 to 10 minute solution, so we'll see. 12-inch uh, cobalt drill bit, two extractors, two heavy-duty bolts, and it's got an 800 number if you have any problems. So there is uh, the two extractors. Well, I'm sorry, there's the whole kit. And you can see, obviously, the long drill bit. It's got some instructions in there. And then you can also see there where that drill bit goes through. Uh, those bolts, um, depending on which one you need and that will help align that drill bit right in the middle of the piece that's left inside that cavity and then once you drill it in and I'm probably gonna try to get most of that half inch that I just showed you out of it then you're gonna take that extractor one of the two and I've read from the reviews on Amazon that that square one right there uh, does not work as well as this one here that looks like it's uh, threaded this one's not threaded, it's just square, and then this one's threaded, and that one, from what the reviews I read, said that this one works better. So let me get this out of here, get it set up, and uh, let's get this thing, let's get going and see if we can fix this thing. All right, so I know this is not the uh, drill bit here, but just to kind of demonstrate, here's a standard drill. Sorry, there's Jake in the background, hacking, coughing. Uh, and there's the hole. So you go to put this in there, and there's just no way to get a straight angle on it. And what you're going to end up doing if you do this is drilling in at an angle and not getting, um, not getting what you need. And like I said, this piece here is kind of recessed enough to where you just can't get the angle on it. So the drill bit provided is this 12-inch drill bit. And when that goes in, gosh, that thing's right there. Kind of, I didn't get much cut at all or I'm sorry I didn't get much out of it at all uh, when that goes in you now have all this room back here where there's less obstruction uh, to, to put it on your drill and to drill and then in addition to that the guide bolt with the hole in the middle that I'm going to screw into here will help keep this centered 
on what's left of that uh, bolt in there. So the instructions for this thing is pretty basic, but one thing it definitely says is to not put a lot of pressure on this drill bit. Uh, it's pretty thin, um, and it's got it's got a job to do, so let the drill kind of do its job, and uh, don't put a lot of pressure on it. I'm also going to use some uh, cutting fluid, and I'm going to take my time and pull it out, uh, pull the, uh, the drill bit out, clean it off, and put some of this on it to keep the heat down so that the drill bit doesn't lose its temper, its hardness and uh, hopefully that will help and just take your time and uh, I'm ready let's see how this works all right so these little bolts are uh, I believe plastic so you got to be careful with these and I'm just gonna kind of hand tighten it and that's all it recommends is to hand tighten it in until you hit bottom which I think I'm hitting bottom there okay so that was not a lot of drilling and you can kind of see I marked that well I made a little white mark on the drill bit right there and to give you a frame of reference that's about how deep I am right there so I'm a pretty good ways in I think I'm gonna go just a little bit further just for some peace of mind and man, do not put a lot of pressure on this thing at all because uh, it just kind of, it cuts really good. So let me go a little bit deeper. All right, so I didn't like the way the spiral one was going in. So I got this one in there. And I'm backing it out. And it says you can turn it with your fingers, which I'm trying to do. And it's turning, but it's not coming out. So let me try that again. I don't believe it. <laughs> I do not believe it. I cannot believe that worked. Finger, just did it with my fingers. So there's the pin. And now this should come out. There it goes. You heard it just drop out right there, right? Um, I cannot believe that worked. And once again, I ended up using the, uh, the one without the spirals and just kind of barely tapped it in with a hammer and just did it with my finger and got it out in just a couple of minutes. And that's how much of it was left. So I only had a couple of threads, but then that all that smooth shaft. And check that out. Didn't exactly drill it center, but uh, enough to get a bite on it and then pull it out. So, and that really saves you from uh, tearing it up because the next step was going to be to, to, I guess, cut into this or cut into that shaft. And uh, now that thing's going to be intact. You do get some extra filings in your case, but I'm taking this thing totally apart and uh, going to rebuild it. All right, and there's the shaft. And now that this is out, you can kind of see where that pin went in there on the end and that's what held it in um, so there it is <laughs> alright so with this out of the way I am just gonna simply push on my axles and they should whoop and there's the c-clip that's doing exactly what it's supposed to do fall right off and now I should be able to pull this axle shaft right out So with that pinion shaft out of the way, you saw what I just did. I pushed on the end of the uh, axle, and the C-clips just popped right out. And isn't it amazing that that's what holds your entire axle in? <laughs> A 5 16 bolt that broke off with very minimal pressure and C-clips, and that's it. Essentially, that holds this whole rear end together. I mean, not really, because you've got your bearings and your bearing caps here, but uh, you, you know what I'm saying. All right, so now that you've got your pinion shaft out, the next step is to take off these uh, main bearing caps. And you got two bolts there and two here. And my understanding is these are specific, meaning you want to keep them left and right and up and down, and you don't want to get them uh, crisscrossed or anything like that because they're a machine surface for that, that that bearing rides on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a punch, and I'm going to put two marks on the top of this one 
and just one on the top of that one. You really don't have to do both, but I'm going to do two for right and then one for left. And then, of course, the punches are going to be at the top so I can get my orientation correct when I reassemble this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then I'm going to take these bolts out, and this whole carrier should come out. All right, so I turned the differential up so it's facing up like this, or the yoke is up. And I've got this bearing. It's starting to come free, but uh, this is not as easy as it just rolling out. But I think I'm about to get it, and I used a dead blow. And that kind of moved this bearing out on that side, and then my pry bar just kind of help that one along and I've been going back and forth and it's just about out it wasn't quite how I wanted to do it okay good so these are my shims and I don't know if you can see that, but they're different thicknesses. So this is the one on the right side, and this is the one on the left side, and I'm gonna make sure I keep those separate. The one on the right side is thinner, one on the left side, a lot thicker. Well, they're not too far off. I'll put a caliper on them and see where they are, but I wanna keep these uh, oriented the same way, just like I did with the main bearing caps. All right, now I want to get the uh, pinion out of here. I put that nut back on just to, so I wouldn't lose it. Let's see where we're at. Because this thing seemed to... Ooh. All right, there's that piece. All right. That piece out of the way. There it goes. And there it is. Wow, I don't I don't really like the look of that. Um, yeah, the gear looks okay, but those splines up there, I don't know what that is, but that's uh, kind of dirty. And all that dirt should not be in there. All right, so this is my uh, gear wrench uh, puller, slide hammer puller kit, and I bought this when I was working on my Jeep, and this is kit 41700D, and I can tell you it is worth its weight in gold. And I know that you can go up to the store and rent these things, um, but as much as I uh, needed this and still need it for my Jeep uh, to do the inner axle seals, to do the pinion seals, and then all the seals that we have to pull out of this, um, I decided to invest in this. And I remember this being about 75 bucks. I got it from Amazon. But it's, uh, like I said, worth its weight in gold. So let me get this assembled, and then hopefully I can show you just how easy it is to remove seals and bearings. And there you go. Bearing and seal all at once. There's the other side. All right, so now that that is done, all I have to do now is knock out uh, this race bearing and seal. I'm going to hit it. There's a groove right there. I don't know that you can see that on both sides, and I'm going to tap it out that way. And everything should come out all at once. Uh, once that's done, then all I've got to do is uh, knock this race out right here, th that inner race, and uh, that will be a completely disassembled 10 bolt. All right, so that completes the disassembly of the uh, GM 10-bolt, and I mean complete disassembly as you guys saw. 
And when that pinion shaft bolt broke off, I really thought that was going to be a major delay, major issue to deal with. I did have to wait a couple days for the kit to come in, but uh, that was a real quick fix, and I, I got right back on track. And then the disassembly overall, minus that pinion shaft bolt breaking, uh, I think it went pretty smooth. All right, so coming up soon is the uh, complete reassembly and installation of all the new parts that I got for the uh, rear differential and setting the ring and pinion gears. I'm probably going to have my buddy Matt over here helping me with that because he's done these before, especially on these GM 10 bolts, and uh, he thinks it's not going to be that terribly difficult to do. I'm probably more intimidated by setting the ring and pinion gears uh, than I was, you know, trying to tear this thing down. But uh, that'll be the next video, and we'll see how it goes. All right, really appreciate you guys tuning in, checking out the video. Uh, hopefully it'll help you out if you ever try to do something like this. Thank you for your support, and as always, thanks for watching.